Hello, Situate School community. My name is Bill Burkett, and I'm the proud superintendent of the Situate Public Schools. The highest priority as we reopen our schools is to provide a safe learning environment for our students and staff. We'd like to share with you a sample of what our six-foot learning areas look like in our elementary schools, Wampatuck, Cushing, Jenkins, and Hatherley, in our middle school, Gates, and Situate High School. Hi, my name is Donna Moffat. I am the principal of Cushing School, and I want to take an opportunity to show you a couple of the classrooms that we have set up just so you have an overview of what it looks like. This is a typical first grade classroom set up here at Cushing School. As you notice, they, the, the, all the desks are six feet apart. Um, this is, would be our instructional area where the teacher has their desk here, but they also have this whole space so that they will be able to instruct our students. So the desk set up is six feet apart. Um, so that the children will be able to come in, they'll, be, they'll have their own assigned seat. We, we are working on directionality and I think the teachers will be working very closely with their students as to how you enter the classroom and put your things down and, and have a seat so that we're not having a gang of first graders all coming in at one time. So those are some of the things that we are going to be practicing. So this is a sample of what our cla outdoor classroom setup would look like. Right now we have 12 desks that are out here. There will be a tent that will be over this space as well, and this is a space that students can use with teachers for more instruction. They can also use it if they are coming out to have their mask breaks, or perhaps they'd like to have um, lunch outside for those students who may be with us for full days. This is an example of our fifth grade classroom. As you'll notice, it's very similar to the first grade setup. Uh, we really are working very hard to make sure the desks stay far apart because with the movement of a fifth grader, their bodies are larger, so we want to make sure we continue to practice social distancing. And as you'll notice, every classroom has a sink, so we keep the path clear so that children can come and use the sink as necessary and at certain times during the day. Hi, I'm Julie McKillop. I'm the principal of the Hatherley School. All summer we've been working to make sure that our spaces at the Hatherley School are ready for students. Today I'm going to show you one of our first grade classrooms, Mrs. Henry's classroom, just to show how we've begun to make sure that we are socially distancing students and we are preparing for their return. So as I said, this is Mrs. Henry's first grade classroom. I'm sure the first thing you're going to notice is that we have two desks that are placed together. The reason for that is we have decided kids in first grade need their stuff. So what will happen is in the morning our friends that sit at the red desk will have a nice big label on here identifying this, this desk as theirs. All, only the red, red desks will be occupied in the morning. In the afternoon when our afternoon students arrive, they will sit at the blue desk. Both will be cleaned in the middle of the day because we also know that first graders could very well lean on this desk. So both will be cleaned before the second cohort arrives. But this just makes it so now our afternoon friends also get to have their own material. The desk that you probably notice isn't here is a teacher desk. So right now in this particular space, the decision's been made that the desk doesn't fit in well. So we're working to have a small table for Mrs. Henry to work at. Each room at the Hatherley School has a little bit of a unique configuration. So we're really having to go room by room, first putting the desks in at six feet apart, and then deciding what other pieces are important and need to fit in. So each room will be a little different in that way. The other piece that you'll notice in this first grade classroom is just a little bit of a help for students to understand how to move around the room. We've put a one-way barrier with tape around the classroom so that when students are traveling, they are able to move around. Uh, they will always have masks on in this room, so it is okay if a student were to be a little bit out of this line, 
But we, all, we want first graders to be comfortable and to feel like they know what's expected. Because I really believe that kids will be much more comfortable at school if they have an understanding of how the new school is going to work. Hi, this is Principal Long at the Jenkins Elementary School. Welcome. I am here to show you a layout of a classroom with desks six feet apart. So join me in looking at room 104. So this we see here is the stage area, as I call it, for teachers. This is their space, um, six feet from here till the first desk at least. Um, this would be a teacher's desk or workstation area. And then as you can see in the classroom, we have the desks six feet apart for students. And teachers will work to have a flow of traffic within their classrooms so students can safely enter and exit the classroom as they would need to. There may be certain areas in a classroom that students were used to having access to that may now be off limits to students just to keep them within their own space and safely social distancing. For example, cubby space may now be used for teachers to store their materials as we have taken other pieces of furniture out of the classroom that they can no longer use to have storage. Hi, this is Tracy Reardon. I'm the new principal at Wampatuck Elementary and I'm standing outside of a second grade classroom here at Wampatuck. Okay, so we're in a second grade classroom here at Wampatuck and the first thing you'll notice are the desks are um, spread apart and these desks are set up at three feet apart but because we're running an AM PM cohort only half of the students will be in here at a time so this classroom has 20 desks in it there'll be 10 students in here in the AM and 10 in the PM so they'll sit at every other desk which will allow for the six foot social distancing that we are um, following so every classroom has a teacher desk and teacher workspace. Some classrooms have two teacher workspaces if it is a co-teaching classroom. And some classrooms, if they're big enough square footage wise, they have a, um, a table for some small group instruction. Typically all our classrooms would have a, a table like this, a round table or a horseshoe table, but some of the classrooms are different sizes and they don't fit with the six foot social distancing. We're in another second grade classroom here at Wampatuck and this one also has 20 desks in it, but you can see the teachers push them together to make groups of two. Um, again, there'll only be 10 students in here at a time with the AM PM split. So there'll only be one student sitting at each group. In between our cohorts, all the surfaces will be wiped down. So even if we have a student sitting um, to the right, both desks will be wiped down before the B cohort comes in the afternoon. Good morning, my name is Ryan Beattie. I'm the principal of Gates Middle School. Uh, today I wanted to show you a couple of our learning spaces in preparation for September uh, as we welcome our students back. Before we go into a, a space where students are going to be learning, I would like you to take a look down our hallway. You'll see that all of our lockers are open at this point. Students this year will not be using lockers. Uh, instead, they will be carrying their belongings with them. So in this learning space, uh, we have a combination of tables and desks. Uh, by allowing this combination of furniture, we can fit up to 18 students in this learning area. Each uh, desk, seat to seat, is six feet apart. Um, you'll see up here, this is where the teacher is going to be projecting, uh, using their laptop to project to our screen. Um, you'll see that the majority of rooms have two entrances, so students will enter through one way, exit through another room, um, and you might also see out there we have hand sanitizer and wipes. So on the way in, students will use the hand sanitizer, grab a wipe to wipe down their area. On the way out, they will do the same, and then um, students will, as they transition from class to class, uh, be following kind of the same protocols to keep each learning area safe. Um, students will be cohorted for their core classes. So what that means is that students will be in this room for four of their, uh, four of their blocks 
and for three of their blocks, they will go elsewhere in the school. But for the majority of the day, students will be having a seat, um, will be using that seat, and will be keeping that seat uh, safe and clean throughout the day. In addition to our inside learning spaces, we will be having three outdoor learning spaces, uh, which teachers will be able to bring their students out here. Uh, each learning space, a tent will be over it, uh, and the spaces will be able to fit about 16 to 18 students in it. We anticipate using these spaces for not just instructional learning environments, but also for masks, mask breaks uh, and potential uh, lunch seating. We'll have one here, one over there, and then one in our sixth grade area. So students will have access to them at various places in the building uh, to prevent having students from needing to travel from one side of the building to the other to get to a learning space. So um, we're excited about this and we anticipate having potentially more outdoor learning spaces as, um, as we continue to get materials from the outside. Hi, my name is Lisa McGuire and I'm the principal at Situate High School. I'm here today to walk you through a few of our classrooms here at the high school and talk about some of the changes we've made for COVID-19. As students enter the classroom, every room will have hand sanitizer available so that they're able to sanitize. And there will also be wipes available to wipe down desks at the beginning and end of class. Uh, every classroom will have social distancing of six feet or more. And some classrooms have different accommodations that we're working through. For example, this is a science lab classroom. So we're looking at how do we use our space effectively during labs and our shared material. So for example, goggles and lab aprons or art materials to the best of our ability when students can receive kits of supplies that they can use through the year, we'll have that. But we're also going to have sanitizing procedures in place that include uh, UV sterilization, bleach baths and wiping down of materials that are shared across classes. This is an example of one of the outdoor classrooms that we'll have at Situate High School. This is a 20 by 30 and we'll have a tent over it and have, we'll have desks or tables available for students as well as the teacher with electric running out here for class laptops and other electronics. We're looking at other spaces within the building that we can use for inclement weather, but our tents are also equipped with sides and we're looking into heating mechanisms for the colder days. This is another example of a classroom, one of our second floor math classrooms. Students are still maintaining social distancing of six feet or greater with desks. Windows are open, uh, sanitizer and sterilization materials are available for each class. So we're currently in the cafeteria, which is set up with students in individual desks with six feet social distancing. Just some other things to consider. We're setting up the library, the small gym, a larger outdoor space in the cafeteria to this uh, specification so that students have other areas to go to for lunch and uh, either for inclement weather or with teachers who need uh, additional space. We know that you may have many questions or concerns as reopening schools is a complex matter. Our comprehensive reopening plan is available on our school website. And if you have individual or specific questions, you may contact your school building principals. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing our students back on September 16th, the first day of school.